says, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Now what Peter's saying, he said, look, this world is going to dissolve, it's going to burn up, there's going to be nothing left of it. And he said, your responsibility is not to be concerned about whether it's going to happen in 1982 when the planets line up and whether already the mark of the beast has started around the world. But your responsibility and my responsibility is to have a life of holiness. God is calling in these last days for a holy people. A holy people. He wants us to be holy. Now what is holiness? Well, let's have a look and see what it isn't first. First of all, being holy isn't sort of being like a monk in some place where you never meet the outside world and you sit there and pray and read the Bible all day. You know, that is a wrong concept. Some people think, well, this is a terrible, wicked old world and I'm always getting tempted, so maybe if I shut myself away someplace, then I'll be fine and I won't get tempted anymore. And so we find that people try to do that. He's told us we're the salt of the earth. And we're to infiltrate the world. Hallelujah. We're to let the world know that we're Christians. So those neighbors of yours, as they're there and not following God, you're praying for them and you're ministering to them and you're seeking to help them. It's not belonging to a particular religious tradition and having all the trimmings of religion. We've got stacks of that in our world today. Loads of religions, all got religious trimmings and they all look good and Jesus looked about his day and they had loads of religious people with all kinds of garments and he looked at them and he says, you hypocrites. He says, you wouldn't even lift one finger to help a person in need. He said, outside you look great, but he says, inside you're full of dead man's bones. And so religious tradition and all that stuff isn't what it means by holiness. You can get around with a Bible under your arm and uh, look very religious, but that doesn't make you holy. It's not being with religious people or godly people. The Bible's full of people that were with godly people. Gehazi was with a prophet. Job was with David. Demas was with Paul. But that didn't make them holy. It's not outward respectability. The rich young man was like that. It's not even listening to preachers. Some people become preacher uh, conscious and they become what I call sermon tasters. And they go along to church. Oh yeah, he was a bad. You know, it's like putting a bit of, uh, putting a bit of food on your tongue. And, not bad, not bad, you know, I'll sit there and big old sermon taster. Friends never become a sermon taster. You know, you can receive, and I tell you frankly, you can receive, friends, from even the simplest person, revelation of what the Holy Spirit wants to say to you. And I've listened to some preachers that just seem to be wandering all over the, all over the bush. But as I listened to it with an expectant spirit, and not a critical spirit, and I sat and said, Jesus, I want to receive some little morsel of food from you today. I've received it every time. And the Jews, of course, in Ezekiel's day, they love to sit around and listen to all the preachers and everything. Well, that's fine, but that isn't holiness. Holiness, what is it? Holiness is the habit of being of one mind with God, hating what He hates, loving what He loves, and measuring everything in this world by the standard of His Word. He who would be holy must be holy in agreements, in agreements with God's Word. A holy man will endeavor to shun every known sin and to keep every commandment. A holy man will strive to be like our Lord, forgiving, unselfish. He that is great, he will become a servant. He will be humble. The humble person who humbles himself will be exalted. The holy person will be faithful in that which is weak, uh, least. The holy person will be meek patient, love, bold announcing sin, separate and evangelistic for the Lord. That kind of person is a holy person. You know how sometimes you sort of wonder whether certain things are right and other things are not, and you're not sure, and you think, well, I don't see anything against it, but I wonder if it's right, I wonder what's wrong. In the early days of the Pentecostal revival in Wales, when they had hundreds of converts come in, they used to say this. They used to say this little thing, what would Jesus do? Should I be involved in this? Should I beat my wife up? What would Jesus do? Should I get carried away by something else or be involved in some other situation? What 
would Jesus do? Is it alright for me to, uh, you know, steal a bit of time from my boss at work? What would Jesus do? And I want to tell you, friends, when you honestly look at that and see that, then you find that there is a very clear guidance as to what holiness is.